So here's a way to prevent a learner from clicking on the next button on a specific slide until the timeline on that slide is finished. This is handy if you've got a particular slide where you want the learner to view and listen to the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here is create a variable by clicking on this Manage Project Variables button, the little X in the lower right of my trigger panel, and we're going to create a new variable. So I'm going to click on the New button. And this variable is going to be a true-false variable that's going to keep track of whether or not the timeline on this slide has completed. So we're going to call the variable first slide complete, since this happens to be the first slide that we're working with. And the initial value of this variable is going to be false, because when the learner first gets to the slide, they won't have viewed the entire thing, right? Now we'll go ahead and click OK and our variable is created. Next, we need a trigger on our slide that's going to change that variable to true when the slide timeline ends. So over here in the trigger panel, I'm going to create a new trigger, and I'm going to use the trigger to adjust the variable called first slide complete. We're going to change that to a value of true when the timeline ends on slide 3.1. So we're going to adjust the variable to a value of true when the timeline ends. Then we can go ahead and click OK. Then the final step is we just need to attach a condition to the next button on this slide to prevent learners from advancing until that variable changes to true. So I'm going to scroll through my triggers, find the one that is associated with my next button, the player trigger right here, and I'm going to open that up and right now it's allowing the learner to jump to the next slide whenever they click the next button. And this is fine. The only thing is we need to attach a condition that only lets them do that when that variable changes to true that we just created. So we're going to click on Show Conditions. We're going to add a condition. And the condition is that the learner can only jump to the next slide by clicking the next button if the variable called first slide complete has a value that's equal to true. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. So now if we preview this scene, once we view our first slide here, we can't click on this next button. It doesn't do anything until this timeline here is finished. And now that it's done, we can go ahead and click Next and view the next slide. One thing to keep in mind here is that if you have a menu on your player, like I do right here on the left, or if you've got it maybe on the top bar of your player, learners, are, will, learners will still be able to click on titles in this menu to jump around or skip through to a different slide. Another thing to keep in mind is that if your slide has a seek bar down here like mine does, learners may also figure out that they can use this to fast forward to the end of your slide quicker, and then you know that's going to get them through to the end without really listening um, to the whole thing. So if these things are a concern to you, here's what you can do. For the menu issue with um, you know, the learner being able to click on menu titles, you can set things up so that the learner can only jump to slide titles that they've already seen. They can't jump ahead. And here's how to do that. If you go to your Home tab and then click on Player, and then when the Player Properties Manager appears, click on Menu, you can come down here and select this little Additional Options gear icon. And this is where you can change your navigation to restricted. And that means that the learners won't be able to skip ahead by clicking on titles in the menu. They can click to a previously viewed slide, but not on a slide that they haven't already viewed. So that's how you can take care of the menu issue. If you also have a concern about learners using the seek bar on your slide to fast forward, you can turn that off if you want to. Now, if you want to turn it off for all the slides in your course, you can click on the features button up here and then unmark the item called Seek Bar, and that'll cause the Seek Bar to go away on every slide. If you really don't care to turn it off for every slide, but you just want to turn it off for this particular slide, then you can do that on the slide level. You'd want to leave it marked here in your player properties, but what you can do is on the slide that you're concerned about, you can come down here to the base layer of your slide and click on the Properties button, the little gear, and here is where you can turn it off for just that particular slide. And then you can click OK. So now if we preview the scene again, we won't be able to jump ahead to another title. And you can see that the seek bar down here is not active. So we can't you know, use it to fast forward to the end of our slide.